Hi, it's Solder in Tool Time again. This one was set into the mailbag. Thank you very much, uh, Secure, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. They mostly sell like uh, drone type parts and things like that, but they also make soldering gear, and I do not have one of these. So this is going to be very interesting. Check this out. This is the HT140 SMD soldering tweezers. Look at this. Absolutely fantastic. And it's USB-C and DC barrel jack. As far as I know, um, leave it in the comments down below if I'm wrong, but this is the only SMD tweezers on the market, soldering tweezers on the market, that has a USB-C input. You can get lots of uh, cheap ones that come with like little external controllers or hook up to existing uh, soldering stations and stuff like that. All the major brands will have, of soldering stations, will have an SMD uh, tweezer attachment, but I've never actually had one of these. Uh, in my lab here anyway. Desoldering tweezers these are for, by the way, they're generally not for soldering, they're for desoldering. So if you need to get a little surface mount uh, component off your board, you just go whoop and whoop, and flip it up. I've always uh, just used two uh, soldering irons, you know, old school stuff. Put your two soldering iron, uh, irons on and flip it up and hope you don't shoot yourself in the eye with it and Bob's your uncle. Um, but no, these are very handy. This is 99 uh, Yankee Bucks. I'll link it in down below. Comes with a uh, very nice uh, 65 watt uh, power delivery and quick charge uh, 3 adapter here and it comes with the Aussie plug look at this and we've got the Yankee plug here I do like so you can either use it as a Yankee uh, plug or I do like uh, these and it comes with the Aussie plug no wackers and it comes with a little stand brilliant we've got a sponge oh sponge porn incoming oh 4k sponge porn for you sponge aficionados here we go oh Look at that. Beautiful. So this nice hefty looking stand. It's got uh, rubber baby buggy bumpers on the bottom so it doesn't slide around on your bench. Beautiful. It's got uh, tapped holes in here. So it looks like we can put the uh, tweezer adapter stand here in different orientations. Nice. Yeah, I really like the way that fits in the stand like that. That's quite nice. I can easily put that in. It's not too, you know, it's going to be hard on a soldering iron because it's not round, um, obviously. But it's got some little rubber inside there as well. And that just holds that very nice. I'm impressed by that stand. Nice work. Now when you're looking at uh, SMD tweezers like this, you don't necessarily want them to touch. And these ones, we can actually rotate them in there by the looks of it. So we can change the angle. These come with uh, curved tips like that. So, but you just want them close enough to be able to get in there for like, that, that looks like it can probably do 0201 uh, parts there. So, um, yeah, and that's what these are designed for. They're designed for like really small surface mount uh, kind of stuff. And of course, your maximum opening distance, what's that about? Uh, 15 millimeters? Yeah, I was right, 15 millimeters. So these look uh, quite decent as like a general purpose uh, kind of tip because you want to come in at an angle so you do actually want them bent like that. You don't actually want them uh, flat. So yeah, that's uh, ideal for like a general purpose tip. Now they're held in there with these little uh, grub screws so they give you three, four spare grub screws which is great and if we take it out, there's the tip. Now that actually is smaller than my regular JBC uh, 245 series. These are actually uh, JBC, well, these aren't genuine JBC because they're not uh, branded JBC, but they're compatible with uh, JBC C210 uh, tip. And that's great if you want the genuine JBC tips, which are probably going to have better uh, thermal performance than this one, although we're yet to try it. You can see how the little uh, grub screws have clamped in there like that so yeah don't over tighten them too much but uh, yeah it's great that they're compatible with genuine JBC tips so you should be able to get all sorts of like uh, different uh, you know types if you really need that or possibly even need extra uh, thermal performance so yeah hats off to that that's terrific it's very nice that they give you spare grub screws because these are really fiddly and you can lose them easily but you're not going to be uh, constantly changing the tips on this, so yeah. So the unit itself got a little tiny screen on it. We've got two buttons, um, USB power delivery 3 or 3.1. Uh, well, it's supplied with 65 watts, but I think it might be up over 100 technically, um, if, it can su if you can su supply it. But into these sort of size tips, eh, I don't think so. So yeah, I think we'd be lucky to get the 65. And 5.5, 2.5 millimeter uh, DC barrel jack, uh, maximum 28 uh, volts. So 
Yeah, um, you know, versatile for powering out in the field. And really, that's what this thing is for. Like you can, oh, well, I'm going to use it in the uh, lab here, but of course you can use it out in the field because it's a USB-C and DC barrel jack solution. We've got metal threaded inserts. Very nice. Uh, let's take it off. Oh, there you go. Pretty simple, isn't it? Nothing fancy pantsy here. So I won't try and reverse engineer that, but uh, yeah, obviously we've got uh, two power MOSFETs on the output here. Uh, we've got, is that a buzzer? I think that might be a buzzer. Anyway, um, very nice uh, uh, solid um, DC barrel jack in there. Wow, I really like that. You're gonna have a hard time breaking that. I just love the uh, captive um, inserts here. Very nice indeed. And once again, more metal threaded inserts in the case. Wow, this is really nice. So there you go, has the well, top side I guess, and the bottom side, there you go. Uh, we're gonna have to flip that sucker over. Let me get this screen up without, without damage. There we go. What is that? I can't read that on the camcorder screen, but uh, I'll sure I'll do it in the edit and put it up. It's obviously just some little uh, probably arm micro jobby. Not a huge amount more on there. But yeah, this is a nicely engineered little handpiece. I really like it. Hats off. And there's a the little spring mechanism that keeps the jaws open. That looks all right. That's, uh, they haven't gilded the lily on it, but uh, that's good enough. But they gilded the lily with all the metal threaded inserts. I do like the knurled rubber uh, strips here. It has a nice feel. They're indented like that to keep your uh, fingers from, you know, sliding off. And it's a fairly short uh, tip to grip distance. Don't mind that at all. It's almost ideal. And it comes with a very nice silicone, oh beautiful, um, a PD uh, 3.1 cable. Um, that feels absolutely fantastic. Apparently that's like a hundred and six, no, what is it, 240 watts they claim or something? Cable? Okay, let's do first smoke and secure version 1.02, 24 degrees. There you go. Uh, so it hasn't instantly heated up. Um, 19.8 volts, uh, 300 Celsius. So what do the buttons do? Oh, 250, okay, it jumps in 50 increments. Ah, oh, right, okay, 50 C. Don't know why you'd need 50 C, but let's go up. Would have liked to have seen better, uh, like temperature control than that, but okay. Um, looks like you just got up down buttons. What happens if I hold down a button? Yeah, there you go, HT idle. OLED volts calibration about what if we hold down this one? Oh, there we go. That switches it on. Oh, she's smoking. She's smoking. 430. Oh, it just overshot there a little bit. Yeah, it just jumped up to 440 there. So let's do the sponge test. 380. Let's drop it. No, it's going up to 440. Whether or not it's really doing that, or we're looking at a uh, internal tip. Uh, thermocouple, uh, you know, coupling thing or not. I don't know, but, oh, jeez, I like that stand. I really do. Okay, temperature check. I've put some solder on that. So, let's give it a bell. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit over, but you can calibrate it. Drop that down to 350. And, yeah, it seems to be consistently 10 degrees over, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, because, like, all this is, is you put it on for a second and you flip your uh, SMD chip off and Bob's your uncle. Um, this is not for soldering. This is for desoldering. So, you know, temperature accuracy and all the rest of it, not as important as a soldering station. Oh, I just picked it up and realized it did have uh, auto temperature uh, setbacks. I was down like 100 and something by the time I picked it up and looked at it. Um, so, yeah, I sorry, I missed that on camera, but... Uh, Yes, it does have auto temperature set back. Neat, and it just uh, warmed up in a couple of seconds. No wackers. Okay, let's try some packages. First time going here. Let's give it a go. And whoop. Slipped a little bit. Because the chip's in the way. There you go. No wackers. Yeah, I really have to get to this side of it. But uh, yeah, put it on there. Boom. Look at that. Works beautifully. Smaller ones. Yep. Boom. Boom, not even going to put them aside. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Tiny little 0402s. I can barely see them, actually, from this far back. So, yep, no worries. Works well. That's at 350. Okay, let's try a couple of big diodes, shall we? 
They got a decent sized pad on. Whoa, no worries. They flip a bit. Oh yeah, that's that's no problems whatsoever. Beautiful. Uh tantalum? Yep. Well. Yep. How about this gigantic shunt resistor here? And let's give it a go. That's a oh yeah, no problems. Wow. Whoops. <laughs> Oops, I might have melted my SD contact there. Anyway, this is a scrap board. It doesn't even have a processor on it. <laughs> now, although this doesn't really have the tip for it, let's see if we can do this uh, six pin SOT25 here, shall we? All right, got to hold the board up at an angle here. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Nice. Another massive diode here. Let's try that. And that one. Well, that's going to take a that's going to take a bit more, but yep, not a problem. It does actually have a power meter on it there, so let's do the old water test here. And yep, yep, that's that's going to maximum. It stopped stopped boiling though, and it's dropped down to fifty eight. <laughs> so yeah, thermal capacity wise, uh, not terrific, but as you saw in the test, um, good enough to actually use. So. Yeah, but that'll, you have you fully submerse it. And just the tip, that's what she said. And yeah, it's going right down. And it, sure enough, it stops boiling when it get yeah. So it's under a hundred. So um, at, at least it's being honest. Nice. Okay, let's get the power meter here. Uh, we've negotiated 20 volts there. Just the tip and yeah, 60 odd watts. Yeah, that's, oh, it, it's actually delivering the 60 watts. It's delivering it. That's nice, it's continuously delivering that, but um, yeah, we're just not getting the temperature in there, of, of course, bloody. Arr. So yeah, it's genuinely delivering that 60 watts. There's going, I'm using two separate cables. There's some loss in the shunt in here and everything. So it's not delivering the full uh, 64 watts or whatever this bank is capable of, but it's pretty close. And uh, yeah, it's just all going into the water. So that's nice consistently doing that. There's no PID loop in there. That's you know, mucking around. So I like that, but there's only, of course, so much you can do in the uh, design of a tiny little uh, tip like that. So um, yeah, at least it's quite honest. And I'm powering from the DC barrel jack, the maximum uh, 28 volts there. And let's have a squeeze. We got wattage up the top here. I'll just put the tip in and 90 watts. Yeah, it's delivering that consistently. 91 watts. No wackers. Nice. So yeah, can we adjust that idle time there? Let's have a look. Sleep time, 60 seconds. There you go. Sleep temperature, 50 degrees. Idle time, 360 seconds. And screen on open, I guess. So you can set all your idle times and uh, your sleep times. That is neat. I like that. And you can set your maximum voltage there and maximum current. Neat. Uh, low voltage. I guess it'll cut out if you've got low voltage. Compensation voltage. Comp voltage. Not sure what that is. Have to RTFM. You can do calibration by the looks of it. Yeah, so please calibrate. You'd have to RTFM for that. I'm not going to go into that. Oh, there you go. ADC values and stuff. Okay, that looks complicated, but comprehensive. So we switch that on and this is how fast it heats up like that. Well, that's what it claims, but it seems to be uh, genuine, so... So you can see it's gone into setback now and it's slowly ramping down to that set point of 50. So what do I have to do to, to can I just give it a wiggle, 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 yeah? Is that enough? Yep, yep, there you go. So yeah, accelerometer and um, yeah, works well. So just for curiosity, can it actually solder to a ground plane? Well, let's give it a go, shall we? Oh, it's not exactly the tip for it. <laughs> Hang on, let me hold on to the actual tip. Yep, yep, it can. No worries whatsoever. So that's pretty good. Now, a really cool feature of this is that if we go into HT here, let's have a squiz, we can go and do all this temperature compensation stuff. So it looks like you can have the Yankee Freedom units. It looks like you can... Uh, have it also um, start heating when you turn it on uh, and it has a turbo mode press both buttons at once but um, I don't know what that does I haven't really uh, 
sorted that out yet. It just goes to 280 degrees and I don't know. But the interesting thing is left, right, select. Okay, this is, um, you can select it so you, it's only putting the power into one element so you can turn it into a soldering iron. So, you know, if you get a nice big beefy tip on there and you, you know, at a pinch, I mean, you obviously wouldn't use this as an everyday soldering iron, but if you just want to put, you know, a one big chisel tip in there because you're out in the field and you're stuck and, um, yeah, you need this to just work as a soldering iron, then you can do that. You can um, divert all the power just to uh, the one tip there. That's neat. So thank you very much, Secure, for sending that into Mailbag. That's the HT140 uh, SMD soldering or desoldering tweezers. Um, and as far as I know, I did ask this on Twitter, um, are there any other ones with USB-C input? And uh, the answer was no. So if you do know of any other uh, competitors, so in theory, this has no competitors. If you want something that you can power from your USB uh, pack out in the field uh, without having to, you know, bodge something together, then leave it in the comments. Uh, yeah, this is probably not going to win an award for best bang per buck uh, solder desoldering uh, tweezers uh, because you can get ones uh, that are like half this uh, price that may even have better, uh, you know, thermal uh, capacity and whatnot, but they have external controllers. This is the only one with the USB-C and uh, maybe the only one with the, like, direct direct barrel jack input up to 28 volts and it can deliver up to 90 watts continuous and 65 watts uh, from the USB, uh, well, the supplied uh, pack anyway. And it desoldered all the parts, even uh, these larger ones down here that uh, like on that you typically uh, use these little desoldering tweezers for and it can get down to little uh, tiny ones too. And the tips are a pretty decent like uh, general purpose uh, kind of tip. As I said, I like the stand as well. I like the flexibility of it with the uh, power sources and thermally uh, it seems to do the job. It's not the best uh, tip in the world for uh, getting stuff through, but for doing SMD desoldering, um, it, it seems fine. So I'm very happy with that. I'm going to actually use that here in the lab. Instead of uh, two soldering irons get in there and uh, trying to flip them up, um, these are just really Neat. Anyway, that's really neat. I like it. I'm going to use it here in the lab. Neato. So I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Uh, leave it in the comments uh, down below. Uh, you know, to do a shootout of something like this, I'd have to get different uh, ones. But then you've got to compare like with like. Like, this is a USB C one. It may not be ideal in terms of, like, there's no strain relief on the cable, for example, like that new iFixit uh, iron uh, had. And it's, you know, it's probably not the best long term solution if you're using it on the bench and you're using it every day. But uh, that's not the purpose of this. It's designed for sort of like out in the field, more out in the field. I don't do much SMD uh, desolder in here. So um, yeah, it'll be perfectly fine for lab use. But for really hardcore lab use, you'd probably be looking at something else. But yeah, you've got to compare apples with apples. So I like that. So yeah, given how cheap are these SMD tweezers, this is only 99 uh, Yankee bucks. Uh, and you can get uh, cheaper ones uh, that, as I said, use like an external uh, power source, external uh, controller. Um, and there's probably no excuse use for any decently equipped lab not to have an SMD tweezers. I've just been too lazy to get one up until now and uh, I'm going to find this really useful. It's going to come in handy. So yeah, you should uh, get yourself a set of SMD tweezers and this one is not a bad option at all. I really like it. So I'll link in uh, this down below. Anyway, thoughts and comments down below as always. Uh, check out the EV blog forum and the EV blog store for all my meters and merchant stuff. Catch you next time.